I know this is a different sport, but we saw it with Keith Primo, Simone Gagne, guys like that. You get one concussion, you're going to get more. It's just a matter of time. Who, who honestly saw Wilson Valdez coming? No one. If you said you saw Wilson Valdez coming, you're a liar, change the channel. You know, Juan Castro, he did well for a little bit, got cut. That's when Wilson Valdez really came in and did his job. And also, what are, how many times are they going to show McNabb flashbacks when he was in Eagles Green? You're going to see this all afternoon. Get used to it. Donovan McNabb is coming back. You know, the, the Sixers, are they better off now than they were with Jason Capono? Would you rather have a Jason Capono or a Kyle Korver? Kyle Korver is still a bench player in Utah, so it's not like his role has changed. And that's what they thought they got when they signed Elton Brand. Elton Brand was supposed to be the leadership role on this team. He hasn't done that either. This team does not have an identity yet. Their leader is Andre Iguodala, but how much of a leader is he? But he is just, he's old, he's a bench player. He got relegated to the bench in San Francisco, a team that can't hit at all. Sorry, Aaron Rowan, not for me. The Eastern Conference is wide open. The Devils, who would have seen them in Injuries. last place in the, in the East? You know, Zach Parise out for three mm. months with a knee. Martin Brodeur out with old age. Uh, Ilya Kovalchuk <laughs> out with an ego problem. The Devils are a mess. The Sabres are a mess. The Rangers have no gab, Rick, yet they still find ways to win. Hockey's so confusing. Jordan Stahl just had a setback for the Penguins. This division, the Atlantic Division, which the Flyers are in first place right now, is wide open. And you're doing that on the shoulders of a 22-year-old goaltender in Sergei Bobrovsky. This is what we get to tell our kids about when we get older. We got to see Roy Halladay, who still has not given up a hit in his postseason career, and in fact has more hits for himself than given up in his postseason career. We get to see him versus the two-time defending Cy Young Award winner, Tim Lincecum, two times potentially. I think the Phillies win it in seven with Halladay versus Lincecum, and I think the Rangers shock the Yankees and beat them in six games. We're going to have a Rangers-Phillies World Series. The only reason we have Michael Layton and Brian Boucher in the net is because we have a guy like Bobrovsky waiting to come up. They didn't want to go out and get a Tim Thomas. They didn't want to sign in a Bokov who went and ran back to Russia. It doesn't matter. Right now, we're waiting for Bobrovsky to come up and be the goaltender of the future. Donovan, as you know in the past, for all you Eagle fans out there, has a tendency to throw balls at the feet. You know, Santana Moss, he's a little old, got a little bit of a bad back, probably can't reach down to get those kinds of passes. Donovan McNabb has to be super accurate today because, as Mike said, Nate Allen is lighting it up right now. He is a playmaker. He can score. He can skate. He can deke. He can do it all. Claude Giroux, only 22, 23 years old, had over 110 points in juniors, had a little bit of a subpar sophomore season last year, picked it up huge in the playoffs. You'll see that all year this year. Bank on it. Nikolai Zherdev, in my opinion, October 7th against the Pittsburgh Penguins will come out on fire. He will get a goal in his first game as a flyer. Nikolai Zherdev, key in the flyer success. The, the, the Phillies have the rotation exactly where they want it. The Giants, like you said, cannot hit. The Phillies have to capitalize on every mistake San Francisco pitching makes in order to be successful in this series and end it quickly. I'm going to equate it like when Pat Burrell came back as a San Francisco Giant. He was cheered immensely, standing ovation for what he did for the World Series. Two pitches later, he hits a home run off Roy Oswalt, turns to booze. We have yet to see the repercussions of the Simone Gagne trade. He hasn't done much with Tampa Bay, and Nikolai Zherdev, who we brought in to replace Gagne, has not done much for the Flyers. The Phillies couldn't get timely hits. They had a bunch of runners in scoring position and just couldn't get that big hit. And the Giants, Cody Ross, seemed to get every big hit, and I think that was the key uh, factor in the series. You don't need to be a good team to make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. The NBA is a star-driven league, and you don't have to be the best team. But once you get to those playoffs, you will get smashed. The cream rises to the top. All right, and now we welcome in UFR's in-house hockey analyst, Greg Hall, to the desk to talk about the first month or so that was in the NHL season. So, Greg, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on, James. And the Canadians coming out of nowhere with their strong play of Carey Price, who everybody was writing off as early as last season, now coming back and being the starting goaltender for this team, doing a great job without Yaroslav Halak. The St. Louis Blues leading that division by a point over the Los Angeles Kings. A little bit of a surprise. Uh, well, it's a surprise if you're a casual hockey fan. A hardcore hockey fan would see last year the Blues had the talent. The Blues just had all the injuries. This year, coming into the season, they traded for Yaroslav Halak from Montreal. He's been phenomenal this year with the goals against under two with back-to-back -back shots, I believe three shots already on the season. The Blues goaltending and defense has been phenomenal, even with their anemic offense. Who would you say is going to have the better season, and who would you say is going to be your MVP? Well, they have first number one overall picks right now with 24 points and a dynamic goal-scoring touch. You have to give it to Steven Stomkos of the Tampa Bay Lightning. 